my fellow traders man what a day this this was a crazy crazy day really difficult to trade based on technicals um that's for sure we just we just did not get to follow through the first part of the day um it was just a we didn't get the day well i didn't get the day that i expected uh put it that way based on how well we ended friday how well we did yesterday uh, just didn't expect it and everybody that's ever told me that politics and trading don't mix today was a perfect example of how they do mix because all day it was politics that affected the market and that and as you know that triggers some pretty heavy emotions and that i feel is what moved the market today and, and what got it in in such an uproar uh, starting out with the fed chair you know he practically came out and you know and what i got from what he said is you know we're not going to keep inflating this economy or you know we're not going to keep printing money um that if america doesn't get control of this coronavirus the economy is going to collapse and, and basically that's what he said um you know they're not going to play games anymore i think they've kind of reached their wits in and the focus doesn't need to be on all of this other garbage it needs to be on doing what we need to do to control the coronavirus across the country and i think that was a message directed at washington not just the president but everybody in washington and what did they do and how did they respond the president came out and said hey we're not going to do any more negotiations until after the election all that does is you know it probably pissed off some more some of his supporters because it's not a Democrat problem. It's not a Republican problem. There are a lot of people that need help. They're Republican business owners. They're Democratic business owners. They're citizens from both parties that need help through this, this pandemic. And just shutting them out is, is the wrong thing to do. And, you know, for me, as long as I've been active in the voting process and all of that, and it's been a while, I've never seen um, Washington split down party lines this way. I've never seen the country as a whole split. I mean, I know families that are they don't even talk to each other anymore because they're split on all of this stuff. And, you know, it's ridiculous. And I look square to the White House because that's who should be bringing us together, not continuing to fuel the flame of all of this, this um, partisanship. It's got to stop. And that's why I feel the market is going to be really tough to trade. You know, unless you trade low float, that low float stuff, it's going to be hard to trade um, using technical analysis, using the things that we do to day trade, the, you know, higher priced or, you know, listed stocks. I mean, it's, you know, it's going to be a, you know, it's going to be a, a, an adventure. Um, but, you know, hopefully things can, can come together. But this slow down message, it really is, is for me because today, and, and I knew it, and you know we'll talk about it here in a minute, but I knew today I needed to slow down. Looking at the watch list, not having you know a whole lot on decent catalysts, you know, I, I just needed to slow down, you know, and I, I got excited and it, it could have spiraled out of control. But I had to recognize really quick that, hey, the volume is low. The volatility is low. 
We're just going sideways. The market may be making moves, but the stocks are just sitting there. You know, like what, you know, what do we do next? So it's just a matter of just slowing down. And if the day is not a day to trade, then we don't trade. And, you know, that's probably the hardest lesson that I've had to learn and that I'm still learning. That are days where it's just best not to trade. Now, later in the day, you know, I was able to catch some really good hits in, you know, larger accounts, ones that I could trade um, larger price stocks and catch some of the flush. But just to, you know, technical wise, it was a very difficult trading day. And that's pretty much why I shut down. Um, trading these technical strategies but let's take a look at um the spy here and you can see here's the channel that we were talking about sunday you know we were in this channel all week and that's why a lot of our swings didn't really go anywhere we didn't lose on them but we didn't gain on them they just didn't go anywhere because the market was kind of trading in this channel well we kind of broke out of it yesterday right here but then today we were trying to confirm, but then, you know, we started catching all of this grief and, you know, the market started digesting it. Uh, I think emotions kind of caught, caught wind and I keep losing my mouse. And, um, you know, we came on, we, we just sold off. Now, if you look at this technically, we're still in an uptrend. We haven't lost the market yet. Um, and, you know, I say that because if the swing trades we were in, some people just bailed out. You know, they got scared. And that's why you can't really watch your swing trades based on intraday volatility. So I tweeted out exactly and I posted in chat exactly my thoughts on, you know, I was, uh, I adjusted my stops and that's all I did. I adjusted my stops to protect my swing trades in case we had a market flush. But the likelihood of the market flushing was, was low. And, you know, I felt. Now, sell, we got a nice sell-off. Let's look at the 60-minute chart here. We got a nice sell-off, but that's not a flush. Look at, we're, we're still kind of trending up. Here's the channel that the market has been trading in. And today, we just kind of sold off, but we couldn't lose the channel. We dipped below it, but we never could claim it. You know, this, this stock closed outside of it, but we, I mean, this candle, but we never got a candle to make a lower low. So we never claimed it. And, you know, I think we're back over 335 now. Um, I know it's late in, in the night, you know, after 10 o'clock. When we got back up to like 336, I think it's pulled back to 335, but we're over the 20-day moving average. And if we open above that tomorrow and start to build, you know, we're, we're not going anywhere. Uh, we're just not. But if we open up tomorrow and we're down here trying to test 330, you know, once we lose 330, we're coming in. And I think the next level we're going to hit is going to be the 100 day. And that's where we're, we'll be coming back to the 100 day or potentially around 320 um, to, to see if we make a lower low. But if we don't make a lower low, that does not mean, you know, that that means that we may not be coming down. You know, so, you know, we just have to, to wait and see. You know, I'm at the point now where I have no idea where this market's going to go but I know what levels I'm looking at. You know, I'm looking at the bottom of this channel. If we lose it, then 
I know we're, we're probably going to come back and test 100. If we hold a 20 and we build off of that tomorrow, then we're going to run into the, um, we're going to run into the, the 50 day. And we take that out. We, we may be back on the road to recovery. Um, but, you know, time will tell. You know, unless we're sitting next to the people moving the market, we have no idea what it's going to do, when it's going to do it, and why it's going to do it. We just have to let the market tell us exactly what it wants. I mean, what it's going to give us. And, and we trade accordingly. All right. So um, here's my first attempt. Now, this looked good. I mean, we had room. Um, there was no chart support or anything that we could see on anything that I used to vet my stops. So when I saw this, now my whole thought process when we, you know, at nine o'clock when we built the watch list was we're going to be patient and just let these things, you know, develop like we've been doing the last couple of days. Well, this one just showed out. You know, it, it took out um, the support here. It came down, and this first five-minute candle closed below the hunt, the um, the hundred moving average, the hundred period moving average. So, common sense said this thing can go, and it did sell for a minute. We got happy, and then it broke our hearts. So, I mean, you can't get mad at that. It was a textbook entry, textbook setup. This is one that we could chalk up and say, this is a failed opening range breakdown. You're going to get, if you trade right and you do the same thing every time and you don't make trading errors, about 30% of these trades are just going to fail and there's going to be no reason for it. That there's no reason that you can attach to it. And we can't get caught up in trying to attach reasons for it. You know, once we get to a certain point and we understand technical analysis, we know that, hey, this is just one of those where nobody was willing to offer it lower. And it just started getting bought back up. And, and that's kind of what happened here. Um... So we took a hit on that. Um, Roku was one that we did make some money on. Just could not get to the second target. There was just no follow through. And then you can see how it started trading. I mean, this is when Roku gets untradable. And look at the volume. Look at how the volume dropped off. There's no trading this. Okay, so you got to you gotta be smart about this. When you see these, these stocks put in big wicks to the upside and downside and there's just no definition to what's going on this price action is untradeable you know unless you're scalping the candles if you're on a like a one minute chart and you're scalping that's different but that's not how i trade so this is pretty much what we had to deal with so we picked up a couple bucks on it um apple turned out to be a pretty decent trade um picked up a couple bucks on it you know i was pretty happy with it um and then you know obviously you guys know this stuff sold off well after i quit trading and i made it a point that i'm not going to take any new trades after 11:30 in this account um you know trading the technical setups now intuitive setups and things that I do in the other account that's totally different but when you're first learning how to trade and you're trying to get consistent you have to get consistent trading on in a technical manner a more mechanical because you have to develop the discipline if you don't have the discipline and the patience that you need trying to be an intuitive trader 
is a good way to lose all your money. So I really 100% advocate, you know, being more of a technical trader, being more mechanical, and, you know, building it from there. And I've got, you know, a, a handful of traders that have graduated to being intuitive, and they're better intuitive traders than I am. But it's a, it was a process. But this is um, when the technical started breaking down and the market sold off on fundamental news. So there were several people that were long that, that got ate up, um, you know, day trading. But, you know, that's what happens sometimes. So that, that was um, pretty much... Uh, what happened here and then I took another one on overstock uh, maybe chase this a little bit because this was a, a pretty big candle here that broke through the opening range high but after 10 o'clock I don't buy on a break I wait for a candle to close above it and then wait for the confirmation and that's what I did here but there was just no buyers up here and it came crashing back down. And, you know, hey, that's, again, that's just part of the game. And that's the way the day was. It was just a, a tough trading day if you were um, trading technicals. And, and it happens sometimes. Especially when you have a day like today with this crazy news. And that's gonna affect the emotions of the market participants. And you're gonna get days like today. And yeah, it would have been smart for me to stay out of the technical stuff, but you don't know. You know, I kinda had a feeling, but you don't know until you know. And, you know, that's why I, I shut it off. And that's why I'd say, you know, after 11.30, these technical trades, they're gonna get shut down. All right, so on the swing trade front, um, ZEN, we took some profit on it according to plan. Well, somewhat according to plan. I had uh, 107.50 as a target. I got an alert and it came within um, 10 cents of it. And so I clicked over and, and went over to the laptop and logged in and it was starting to come back down. So I went ahead and took just took it where it was. And it it had jumped down from like 25 cents to 107.27 to 107.09 um, as soon as I clicked to get out. I mean, that's just how quick it, it dipped. But then it did go back and hit 107.50. Um, I forgot what the high to, today what was the high it made today? I can't remember, but you know, it did actually hit the target I had set. But um, I did tweet out once the market started rolling over. Now, you don't just bail out of these. Just because you start to see the market sell off and you think it's got some bad news, you don't bail out. You still stick to your trade plan unless your trade plan breaks down. And this is why we don't watch intraday market volatility as it relates to our swing trades. Because the days can be volatile, our stocks can pull, give us a deep pullback and you bail out. And then before the day is out, it's gone past where you bail back up and, and makes new highs. And then you're sitting there, you know, feeling kind of bad because you got faked out. You should never get faked out on a swing trade. If you let yourself get faked out, it's your fault. Every time I do that, I have to accept responsibility for it. But this is um, pretty good. I did tweet out, I changed my stop from 100 
to 104 because if it's if the market started washing out i'm not going to sit there and let it wash all the way back and give up all of the hard work that i've done so i have to pick a spot that you know is way out of the volatility range that if it breaks through that and it keeps coming that means this market is probably going to roll over and it's time to take it off but putting in a hard stop or just bailing out because the stock dropped three points from the highs is is not what you do on swing trades um but that was a pretty good um target here we hit our target so now we're looking for it to break through get up to around 110 um, that's what i'm looking at uh, for next so tomorrow my stop is still going to be 104. it's still going to be 104 that's going to be my profit stop on this um sq this is the whole trade on one i think i showed you the exits yesterday but this is uh, the whole trade together and ended up 2261.89. Um, not bad. This was supposed to be an overnight gap up trade. And it didn't gap up. But it did hold trend. Here again, we had a day that pulled back. But look at the overall trend. You got to zoom back. Look at the overall trend. If the trade is still in context, you got to keep it. You got to give it time to get to your targets and and that's what we did so really nice trade i feel on um on sq so i think that's it yep so that wraps up today that's enough i guess um so tomorrow just gonna be looking for um, some more action. I'm not scanning tonight. I don't know what this market's going to do. Um, if I wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning and the market is above the 50 and the 20 and it looks like we're building, I'll do some scans and you know send those out in a private tweet, post them in the room. But right now, as it stands now, I'm not looking to get in any more swing trades. Our, our Sunday watch list, phenomenal. I think only a couple of stocks didn't make it. And the ones that didn't trigger Monday, triggered today. Um, the two that we were looking at um, this morning, which was what FSLR and um, DE. No, FSLR triggered yesterday. So it was Chewy, CHWY, and DE. But I don't think Chewy triggered today, but DE did. Um, but it was a um, pretty good day. So our watch list from Sunday, you know, did pretty good. I think LEN broke out yesterday, but then pulled back. And, um, that one didn't hold but we can keep an eye on that to see if it if it brings up the rear um, but i was really looking at chewy i wanted to get in that in my td account but it just it just didn't trigger today i mean it came close but now with the market the way it is i just i just don't know so I'm not looking to enter any any new swings. Just manage the ones that we have and you know see where we go from there. So that's going to wrap it up. You guys, I will catch you um, tomorrow. So have a good night. Stay safe until we meet again.